Today we're going to make a adaptive spring using Autodesk Inventor. It's a fairly easy part once we get going. So I've started up Inventor here and uh, we're in a part file, English, and uh, we're going to start our first sketch and we're going to place it on one of the planes. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to create a circle from the origin place a dimension on that. We'll make that 2.1 uh, inches. We're going to finish that sketch off and we're going to extrude it about a quarter of an inch. Then start a second sketch and create a circle from the origin, placing a dimension of 2 and we'll take that and we're going to extrude that in in a subtractive measure about a eighth of an inch. All right, before we move forward, we'll just go ahead and change the material, give it some color or brightness. And uh, this will take care of and hold our spring in place. We'll use this part twice and the spring will fit in between those two parts. So let's go ahead and save this part off. And we'll call it plate. From here, we're going to go ahead and start a new assembly file. In our assembly file, we're going to place that plate we just made. And I'll place it twice. OK, I'm going to use the free rotate command on the second plate to kind of spin it in the orientation. All right, we'll add a few constraints here and that will get us all square. Let's find a origin axis. And we'll do an axle constraint on both of our plates to the origin axis. We'll separate those out. Okay, we'll lock one of these in place. Let's find a plane that'll work. That one will work. We'll do a constraint on those two. Okay, pretty good shape. Now we're going to set off an offset const make constraint between the inside face of our two plates. And we'll set an initial offset distance of three. OK, I'm going to go find that. I like to rename these so that I know where they're at. So I'm going to call it Drive. And that way I can easily find it in my browser over there. OK, so at this point, it's time to start to make our adaptive part. And we'll do that with the create button up here. We'll call it spring. And we'll place it right in here on the inside face of that plate. Once we're inside this part file, we're going to go ahead and create two work planes on the inside face of the plates. All right, and while we're doing working features, let's go ahead and add a work axis in, um, like so. That should be all of our work features. We want to make sure they have this little arrow that's indicating they're adaptive, meaning they're tied to our assembly model. From here, we're going to go ahead and create a sketch. And this sketch's only purpose is going to be to, whoops, I did that one wrong. This sketch's purpose, only purpose is going to be to define the distance between these two uh, work features. So we're going to start a sketch. 
and we need a plane that's going between them. So this particular plane will work. Once we're in the sketch, I'm going to project geometry of the two work features. And then I'm going to throw a dimension across those projected features. I'm going to get this message up that's saying that uh, this is a driven dimension. That's what I was expecting. So I'll go ahead and accept that. Notice that it has the brackets around there. So if this was to move, that dimension would change. And that's exactly what we're looking for, for this to function correctly. I'm going to come up here to the FX parameters feature up here at the top of the screen. And I'm going to take that dimension we just made, and I'm going to define it as spring height. Now, it's important that I remember how I type this in. So I did an undercase and spring with an H, and I'll have to remember that for a step down the road here. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and make our spring. So we're going to start a sketch. We need a plane that's somewhere in between here. So that one would work. I'm going to create a circle. I'm going to give it a dimension of probably about 0.1. And then we're going to locate it. At uh, 0.95. Okay. And we'll just get it squared away on the piece there. Set that dimension to zero. Okay, now we're fully constrained. We're going to finish off that sketch. Okay, at this point, we're going to go into the coil command. It's going to find that sketch. All we have to do is use our work axis. We're going to go coil size. We're going to change to revolution and height. For my height, I'm going to change that to that parameter that we changed. So spring H. Revolutions, uh, five or six should do it. That looks good. And click OK. We'll go ahead and add a material to it. All right. Before I continue on, I'm going to address my spring. It's going to right now be into my plates a little bit. So I'm going to use a split feature to fix this up. In my split feature, I'm going to use trim solid. It finds my solid. My removal tool, I will pick the plane. I'll make sure my arrow is facing downward. Hit apply and hit apply or OK. That's it. All right, before we move back to our assembly model, I'm going to take my three work features and turn the visibility of them off. The sketch that we use to define the spring height that's visible as well, so we'll go ahead and turn that visibility off. And now we're in good shape. I'm going to return back to my assembly model. And we'll just change the view a little bit. All right, and remember that constraint that we made, and we labeled it Drive. I'm going to right-click on that and hit the Drive feature. I'm going to pick these arrows here and add drive adaptability on. We'll make the total steps about 10, start and start to two. And we'll go from three to five inches on this first run and let it go. And there we go. We have ourselves a spring that changes and compresses based on the distance between these plates changing. I hope you enjoyed uh, making a spring and uh, you give this a try.